Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather to celebrate sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, saw that at the right hand of the one sitting on the throne, there was a scroll that had writing on back and front and was sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a powerful angel who called with a loud voice, is there anyone worthy to open the scroll and break the seals of it? But there was no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth who was able to open the scroll and read it. I wept bitterly because there was nobody fit to open the scroll and read it. But one of the elders said to me, there is no need to cry. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has triumphed and he will open the scroll and the seven seals of it. Then I saw, standing between the throne with its four animals and the circle of elders, a lamb that seemed to have been sacrificed. It had seven horns and it had seven eyes, which are the seven spirits God has sent out all over the world. The lamb came forward to take the scroll from the right hand of the one sitting on the throne, and when he took it, the four animals prostrated themselves before him, and with them the twenty-four elders. Each one of them was holding a harp and a golden bowl full of incense made of the prayers of the saints. They sang a new hymn. You are worthy to take the scroll, the scroll and break the seals of it, because you were sacrificed, and with your blood you brought men for God of every race, language, people, and nation, and made them a line of kings and priests to serve our God and to rule the world. The word of the Lord. God. Response, you made us a line of kings and priests to serve our God. Sing a new song to the Lord his praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in its maker. Let Zion's sons exult in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music with tremble and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the poor with salvation. 
Let the faithful rejoice in their glory, shout for joy and take their rest. Let the praise of God be on their lips. This honor is for all his faithful. your face shine on your servant and teach me your decrees. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus drew near Jerusalem and came in sight of the city, he shed tears over it and said, If you in your turn had only understood on this day the message of peace, but alas, it is hidden from your eyes. Yes, a time is coming when your enemies will raise fortifications all round you, when they will encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you and the children inside your walls to the ground. They will leave not one stone standing on another within you, and all because you did not recognize your opportunity when God offered it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are reading continuously from the book of Revelation as we near the end of the liturgical season. And what we read of, and of course in the book of Revelation, is the themes surrounding heaven and hell, the last judgment, etc. And what we hear about today is that there's a scroll, and there's a search for who is fit to open the scroll. So what do we understand by the scroll? Well, the scroll is, has the plan of God for the world, the plan of God for us all. And at first there's, John is searching around, who, who can open this scroll? And then the voice of an angel uh, speaks of the lamb, the lamb who was slain. In other words, that Christ, Christ is the one who has authority to open that scroll. And so there's this new hymn that is sung uh, to him, you are worthy to take the scroll and to break the seals of it because you were sacrificed and with your blood you bought men for God of every race and language, people and nation, and made them a line of kings and priests to serve our God. So he's the one who sits on the throne. And in the midst of all this, all sorts of things are happening. You know, over the chapter 6 to 9 of the book of Revelation, we speak about these things. And, but, but the message is quite clear that Christ has conquered. And so it's not a message of doom and gloom. It's a message of tremendous hope, a message of hope. Christ has conquered. The lamb who sits on the throne, the lamb who is victorious. And how has he conquered? By the sacrifice of the cross. By laying down his life for each and every one of us, he has conquered by the blood of the lamb. And so we too join in singing that hymn. And we too should, should celebrate in the fact that he has conquered. Now what does that mean for us in terms of how we live? It means that we have to live our lives devoted to Christ. That if he is the lamb on the throne, and he, if he's the one who reigns in our lives, then how, do, how does that affect every aspect of our lives? What does that call us in terms of conversion and transformation? What is the challenge in our everyday living, in our families, in our relationships, etc.? How does that affect the way we think? Do we therefore reflect and do our lives therefore sing this new song to the one who sits on the throne? Do our lives proclaim that? In the gospel, we hear that Jesus draws near to Jerusalem, comes in sight of the city, and he weeps. He weeps. Just before this, we have the entrance into Jerusalem um, where they're, they're rejoicing. And, and, and of course, we're ending near the end of Luke's gospel, so it's nearing that time when he will die, his passion, death, and resurrection. And what is he weeping about? Well, 
if you in your turn had only understood on this day the message of peace, but it's hidden from you. And, and he speaks about a time of destruction that will come, but all of it because they had not listened. You did not recognize your opportunity when God had offered it. When God had offered it. Jesus weeps. The, the, the weeping of Jesus is a very interesting thing that happens here because, you know, if we remember the opening of the Beatitudes in Matthew's Gospel, for instance, where we, see, where we hear that Jesus saw the crowds and then he began to teach them. What did he see as he looked around at humanity? What does he see in our lives? Those very lives that ought to proclaim him as king, as we were just saying, out of the book of Revelation, singing a new song. What does he see in the midst of it that may cause him to weep? What does he see in our world today? Jesus wept. And what are the opportunities to recognize God? What are the opportunities that God has given to us that we missed? And likewise, he may sit out of us. You did not recognize your opportunity when God had offered it. And of course, in his direct sense, the opportunity is he is in their very midst and they were blind to see him. But to those who did, the beginning of John's gospel, they became children of God. What are the opportunities that we, we miss that God is offering for us to embrace his love, for us to grow in that love, for us to be challenged out of our stagnant ways of living? the opportunities that we miss. Jesus weeping also becomes a way for the church, an invitation for all of us, and takes us to that beatitude, blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be consoled or comforted. Because in, in the midst of what we see in our world and the pain that is there, in the midst of all that seems to be so difficult and can cast a, a gloom, Yes, we know that the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Lamb has conquered, but we know that we too must join in feeling that pain. Because the, the, the antidote, as it were, to the real sickness of our world, our sin sickness, is Christ himself. It's Christ himself. That was God's answer to the virus of sin sickness, Christ, his blood. And that's what gives us immunity, Christ. And as a church, his body, we are called to weep in the midst of the divisiveness that we see. In the midst of the pain, the grief, the neglect, the lack of care for human life, the corruption, the injustice, the poverty, the refugee situation and the mass movement of people. Of course, limited in this time of COVID, but causing more people to suffer. Tremendous inequalities in our world, in the midst of the unforgiveness in our own lives, the brokenness in our families. In the midst of all of that, Jesus weeps. And as a church, we are invited to feel with the Lord for his people. That's what it means to, to be a disciple, to be one who learns from, follows the Lord. That we must weep. We must weep. Some years ago, Pope Francis was in the Philippines. And I believe it was a young girl who came and asked the question about how could we have hope and, and believe? And, and what, do we, what do you have to say about our situation? And she spoke about the poverty and, and the abuse and all the things that were happening. The storms that passed through every year and, and caused destruction after destruction. And the Pope said, I don't have an answer to you except that, and he spoke about weeping that we must feel that pain. Because only when we feel that pain and own it as part of our own existence can we then not only pray, but be moved to act on behalf of those who suffer. And realize the great solidarity that we're called to, that all of us are part of the human family. In the midst of a world where more and more we can stay in our little corner and think that's only affecting them over there. It's not really affecting us. Well, COVID has taught us, well, it's everywhere. And what affects the Far East will soon enough affect us. What affects the North will affect the South. It's some years ago, I, I remember reading a Haitian poet who wrote about the crisis in Haiti. And one of the things she spoke about 
was a way in which the rest of the Caribbean looked at Haiti as though it was just on its own. And she said, but we are all part of a ship. And if one part is drowning, why does the rest think we're, we're up at, you know, at the other end and we're okay? We are, we are being invited in our gospel to not be afraid to open our hearts as God did. Where would we be if God did not open his heart for us in a way that allows us to receive his son while we were still sinners, while we still rejected him? That we are called to open our hearts to embrace the human world, to embrace the brokenness that is there. Because the real healing comes as Christians, not necessary by alleviating it. We may not, to, to, to the complexities of life, we may not be able to alleviate. But the healing comes when, as Christians, we realize that we have a duty and a responsibility to bear with each other the crosses that we carry. And so we move those, the suffering and the pain to a level where it can be shared among each other. That's the cross of Christ, taking it all on himself and inviting us as a body of Christ to do that. Because when we care, we act. When we care, we love. And we allow that love to be spelt out in concrete ways. How is the Lord inviting you to weep? And sometimes we can't weep because we've grown so accustomed to the realities around us that it's hard to weep. We become so attuned, numb, to hearing how much murder or pain there is in our world. Another one died of COVID or another this or another that. That's someone's life. That's someone's mother, brother, sister, aunt, nephew, niece. That's somebody. We are being called to once more have a heart that is the heart of God and to feel with the heart of God and to pray out of that space and to act out of that space. Jesus weeps over Jerusalem as he enters Jerusalem. And Jesus dies for the world, knowing the pain that he saw, the rejection that he saw. He felt it and he responded. Let us indeed pray for the grace to imitate our Lord and King, the Lamb who alone is worthy. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your incredible love that is faithful. Your love that chooses to feel, to weep for us, to know our brokenness, to enter into the miry clay, to enter into that brokenness. And from within there, to redeem us. We pray, Lord, that recognizing the call to be the body of Christ that we are through the waters of baptism, that we too may not be afraid to open our hearts, to welcome, to include others, to include the pain, so that as brothers and sisters in Christ, we may share the crosses that people bear, broaden it into a way that it can be carried and bring about salvation. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who are hopeless in the midst of their pain, their weeping, their experience despair, their experience loneliness, tremendous grief, depression, those who weep because of the loss of loved ones, families that weep because they are torn apart by infidelity, torn apart by unforgiveness, torn apart by sickness, death, financial burdens. We pray for your mercy, O oh God, for your healing. And we pray that as a people of hope, and people of love, your body 
that we may be moved to act in concrete ways to help each other. Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray for our world. We pray for the pouring of your spirit upon all our leaders and upon each and every person. That your spirit may bring conversion of heart. That we may work for unity, justice, and peace. Lord, hear us. We pray for the church that in the midst of all that is all that divides and may be scandalous, that the church may continue a call to witness, that you bring about greater conversion of hearts, and the church may always proclaim the message of salvation in you, Jesus Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For those who are not well, who are joining us through the media or present here, those in our institutions of care, those suffering in one way or another, we pray your healing touch. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. Let us bring before the Lord our own intentions, which we have in the depths of our hearts. Lord, hear us. For those who have died and gone before us, for all the names that of those persons who have passed that we lift before the Lord in this month of November, for Donald Acqui, and for all who have died because of crime or violence, died suddenly because of illness, those who have died because of COVID, and those who have taken their own lives, we pray eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. Amen. Loving Father, we thank you that you hear our prayer, for we make them through Christ our Lord. sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring out to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jason, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy.
let us pray together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. O Divine Savior, O Jesus, O Blessed Sacrament. Let us enter into covenant with Christ, celebrating the Eucharist of love. Take a little bread and wine, lift up the chalice of the King. Hallelujah, it's the sign of love. Hallelujah, it's the sign. Transform all my people from your sin and eat and drink and live. Hallelujah, it's a sign of love. Hallelujah, it's a sign of peace. Hallelujah, it's a mystery. Having received of the Lord and recognizing the call to sing this new song to the one who is worthy to take the scroll and open its seal, Jesus Christ, his love poured out and sacrificed for us. Let us truly give thanks to God for his goodness. For he looked on us in our nothingness, as Mary says in the Magnificat, he looks on us in our nothingness. And yet he cares. He weeps in the midst of the realities of our lives. Yes, what is going on with you matters to God. And he cares about you. He loves you. He sent his son to die for each and every one of us. And as the saints remind us, that if it were just us, he would still die for us. If it was you alone, 
because that's what love would do. A love is love to minister to you as you know that he loves you and his love to expand your heart to care for others, to weep and to act on the behalf of others. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O oh Lord, that what your Son has commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth and charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. My people, wake up in the shop. Wake up, my people, know what life's about. And wake up to the rays of all the ones who suffer sorrow. Wake up, promise now to do the best to change tomorrow. Wake up, my people, and open every door. Wake up, it's time.